The best audio interface for your studio is not the best audio interface for the stage. When it comes to choosing a audio interface to use with your band for backing tracks on stage, the things you should consider, the criteria is vastly different than what you should look for for something in your studio. In this video, I'm gonna share exactly what that criteria is, plus I'm gonna save you all the time and effort and share my top picks for 2023. Now, like I said at the beginning, what I'm looking for for an interface in my studio is different than what I'm looking for to use on stage with my band for backing tracks. For example, in the studio, I want lots of inputs. I want those inputs to have really great preamps. I want the ability to have headphone uh, monitor mixes. I want an interface that has low latency. I don't need that when I'm on stage with my band. Now those things are, are great in the studio. In fact, those things are great if I'm in a live looping scenario. If I'm using my guitar and doing a live looping setup, I really want similar characteristics in that interface as I do in the studio. But when it comes to using a audio interface on stage with my band uh, for backing tracks, none of those things matter. Here's the criteria and things you should be considering when you buy an audio interface for live performance to use with your band for backing tracks. Um, and he, this is why this is important. This is why this is different. If you don't get this right, if you don't consider these, you'll end up spending two, $2,500, $2,000 on an audio interface that someone tells you, oh, this is the best audio interface. These preamps are so pristine that's gonna limit you and inhibit your abilities on stage when you're using track. So here's the things I think of when I go to buy an interface for live performance. Number one, outputs. Inputs do not matter, outputs are king. I want as many outputs as possible and at bare minimum, four outputs. So when you're looking to buy an audio interface or backing tracks, consider the outputs, don't even think about inputs. Uh, get as many as possible, at least four. The second thing, I wanna make sure that those outputs are balanced. If at all possible, I want an audio interface with balanced outputs. What that means is I can skip having to buy direct boxes, having direct boxes spread out all over the stage or, or spending lots of money on a rack mount direct box uh, setup, and I can go directly from my interface into my stage snake, uh, into my audio console. Um, it's gonna make life a lot easier and a lot cheaper. The third thing is I wanna make sure those outputs on my interface are phantom power protected. They're protected against phantom power surges. I, here's why this matters. I could think of three different times that I've had one of those cute little red interfaces that everyone buys because they're so cheap stop working because it was fried because someone accidentally left phantom power on or turned phantom power on while that interface was plugged in. So you wanna make sure that your interface has lots of outputs, that those outputs are balanced if at all possible. Uh, you wanna make sure that those outputs are protected against phantom power surges. Now as a bonus, um, if it can handle MIDI, process MIDI, that's really, really great. But those are the three main things I'm looking for. Now you may be going, but Will, you said inputs don't matter. I'm a live looping artist, I'm a solo artist. Well again, this video is specifically backing tracks, running tracks with your band. We'll do a separate video on best audio interfaces for solo artists for live looping. And when a band uses a audio interface on stage, you do not plug things into it, you take things out of it. And you may go, but Will, my band, we use our audio interface to mix our in-ears, we do vocal processing, we run tracks, we have no problems, what are you talking about? Well, you may be doing that, but I wanna just let you know, the way professionals do it is we use an audio interface that gives us outputs for our tracks. Now, if you do vocal processing, that's great, but you use a separate interface for that, or you process vocals at front of house. If you're doing monitor mixes, that's great, but you don't use your audio interface that you use with tracks for that. You use your front of house console to mix front of house, maybe a monitor console, or maybe a console that can do both. Now, as a, Bonus kind of tip, um, one of the things you should potentially consider, if you're listening to this as a band that, um, and I'm gonna actually pull up a link here as I talk about this, as a band that is um, needing to mix their own uh, uh, in-ears, needing to mix front of house, uh, needing to get output out of Ableton Live, and you're going, Will, you're telling me I gotta buy a different audio interface for the studio than I have to buy for the stage. I want you to really consider one of these. This is the Behringer X32. This is uh, uh, the kind of console version of this. I actually have a video that I'll link in the description of this where I talk about um, a all-in-one solution for small bands for solo artists. This is a really great solution because instead of being a audio interface, it is a mixing console. It mixes your in-ears and you can connect the USB cable to Ableton Live and it can function as an audio interface. And what's great about that, your monitor mix, your 
front of house console is not subjected to latency like it would be if you went through your computer through your interface. So if that's the scenario you're in, check out the video I linked in the description of this and check out the X32. But I wanna share my top picks for audio interfaces for bands running tracks using backing tracks on stage. If you wanna get links to all of these, plus all of my other suggestions, in-ears, MIDI controllers, um, uh, best hubs to use with your computer, best hard drives, how to back up, head to fromstudiotostage.com slash gear to download my free gear guide. Now, let's get to it. So number one pick for me, um, this is one of my favorite audio interfaces from definitely my favorite uh, audio interface company. This would be the iConnectivity Audio 4C. Now, oh, there it is upside down. Let's start it the other way. Now you may look at this and go, but Will, you lied, it has audio inputs. Well, this actually may make it a good choice for the studio as well as the stage, but uh, it does have inputs. I don't care about the inputs in this case. What I wanna turn this around and show you is the output. So we have four here, plus our headphone output, which is five and six. So we have six total outputs. One thing you have to be aware of when it comes to choosing audio interfaces for live performance is when you have headphone outputs, you wanna check with uh, uh, the company you're buying it from, you wanna to talk to a Sweetwater sales engineer, you wanna to talk to someone that uses it, and you wanna ask them the question, hey, I see there's a headphone output on this. Is this a separate output than these, or is this just a mix of my, for example, inputs here? You'll see a lot of audio interfaces that maybe have you know, a couple, four outputs. They have multiple headphone outputs on them, but those headphone outputs are not additional outputs. They're just a blend and mix of things coming from the computer or inputs into the interface. So what I love about this, six outputs in total. These are balanced. These are fan and power protected. So no issues there. Uh, you also get five pin DIN MIDI. So that's an additional uh, uh, thing here. Really super powerful on all eye connectivity gear is this USB host port, which allows me to connect uh, USB MIDI controllers up to eight with one interface, which is really, really powerful. Uh, USB-C connectivity, which works really, really well with newer computers. And what's nice is we have this additional USB-C port here. What's cool about this is I can connect another computer, I could connect a, uh, a iPad, a iPhone uh, to this, and I can run tracks and send audio back and forth between computers. I can send MIDI back and forth between computers with that additional port. So imagine just for a second, uh, I could have two computers connected here, one for keys, one for tracks, and I could send output out of both computers at the same time and maybe split our outputs and say, okay, these will be for keys, these will be for tracks. Uh, so the Audio 4C for my connectivity is a really, really powerful solution. Now, let's say we need more outputs than that. Uh, maybe we don't need the powerful MIDI capabilities of the Audio 4C. Here's another favorite of mine. This is the track rig from Loop Community. I mean, so many outputs, it doesn't even fit. In, in one camera shot. Well, one thing I love about the track rig, we have outputs right on the front of the interface. It could also be rack mounted, so you could consider this the back as well too. Uh, they are phantom power protected. Uh, they are balanced, so I can do an XLR cable directly out of here, directly to my stage snake. Now, the power of the track rig is the fact that there's no routing software for this. There's no control software for this. It's just outputs. I just connect this to my computer, I route out, out of Ableton Live, and I go. It's also the downside to this is you can't do the fancy stuff you can do with the Audio 4C or some other audio interfaces, but it makes it a really great solution for live performance. Now, jumping over to the back of this interface, um, we can uh, power this here. We can flip the power on. We have this USB hub. Uh, this is how we connect to our computer. We have this uh, four port USB hub, which is nice because this allows us to connect hard drives. We could power our phone. Uh, we could do different things with this if we want to, but it's important to stress, uh, this is not a, a USB uh, host port like uh, you get with iConnectivity. You can't do fancy things with this. You just connect multiple USB peripherals. It, it could be a USB MIDI controller as well too here, uh, but just worth keeping in mind. The USB ports are, are great, but they don't do the fancy stuff that the iConnectivity stuff does. Again, that may not matter for you. Now, when it comes to my top pick for audio interfaces for backing tracks, you could probably guess what it is iConnectivity Play Audio 12. Now, taking a look at this guy, when it comes to outputs, there's a plethora of outputs. 10 outputs, balanced outs, uh, protected against phantom power surges. Uh, on the front, we have a headphone output, which actually makes it 11 and 12. So uh, like my note with the Audio 4C, this is a separate output. This is could be a blend of your other outputs, your things coming from your computers, but it's actually additional outputs, 11 and 12. So 12 outputs in total. We get our USB port here uh, for host port stuff, which is really great. 
We get uh, an ethernet port here to where we could send MIDI over ethernet and we can have four discrete connections, which basically means we could send MIDI from our Play Audio 12 to four other computers all over ethernet. No other devices needed for that. But the real power of the Play Audio 12 is it's two audio interfaces in one. So we get two USB ports here. I can connect this to computer one, this to computer two. I can have it set up to where it automatically switches when computer A stops running. So I have redundancy and I can switch to computer B. Uh, but the way I like doing it is I like doing it manual and I connect a foot switch to the in port here and I can press that foot switch and switch me from computer one to computer two. Now, like the Audio 4C, what's great about the Play Audio 12 is you could set this up to where you could actually share um, outputs from both computers. So you could split, let's say on the back here, we could say computer one is outputs one through five, computer two is outputs six through 12. Uh, so it's completely possible to do that. Or you can use this for redundancy, which is really, really cool. Now you may be listening to this. And uh, and again, if you want links to any of this, head to fromstudiostage.com slash gear to download that gear guide. But you may be watching this, listening to this and going, uh, but Will, um, I don't have an audio interface at all. I'm actually using Dante, uh, or we have Dante set up in uh, our club, in our church, our house of worship installations, typically more in installed situations. What do I do if I'm using Dante? Well, the best way to get audio out of your computer if you're using Dante is Dante Virtual Sound Card, DVS. This allows you to basically uh, uh, trick your computer into thinking an audio interface is connected and route audio directly from your computer to DVS to have it show up on the Dante network. But as a little bonus tip, are you down for a bonus tip? If you made it this far, you, you, you're you gonna like this. You can get the link to this at from cdostage.com slash gear as well too. Here's a bonus tip, that DVS, Dante, super great, super powerful. I've used it before, I love it. Makes it really efficient and easy to connect an ethernet cable from your laptop. Uh, have no need for an audio interface. But what do you do if your tracks stop working? If you wanna create a redundant Dante tracks rig, you're gonna need this guy. This is the xbox.md from Direct Out Technologies. It's incredibly powerful. If I flip this around, what you're gonna see is I get four different Dante ports. What I could do is run DVS on two different computers. I route from DVS to this, and this effectively acts as a switcher, and then it goes to the Dante network. So the Dante network simply just sees this. This reads DVS, and so I can automatically switch or manually switch using the control software uh, for this to switch between computer A and computer B. So if there was a failure, uh, computer A stopped working, I could automatically switch or manually switch over to computer B. This is the best solution if you're using Dante. Now, um, one final thing I wanna mention, what about MADI? I know a lot more folks are getting into using audio interfaces to run MADI, uh, particularly if you're using a audio console that accepts MADI, this may be a good solution for you. Uh, what you should consider, the best options here, uh, RME's Matty Face USB. This is what I see most people, most of my friends using out on the road. Another great option from RME is the Matty Face XT. It's a little more uh, pricey, a few more options, but these are really great solutions if you're looking to use Matty. Uh, it has a coax connection on there to, to connect in uh, if you're using Matty. But if you're looking to use Matty, those are really great solutions. Now, again, as a reminder, to get links to all of this, head to fromstudiostage.com slash gear to check out my brand new gear guide updated completely for 2023. It's not just audio interfaces, it's MIDI controllers, in-ears. What else do we have in there? Uh, I mentioned hard drives earlier, all sorts of things, everything you need for live performance and to succeed with your band on stage. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like content like this, if you use Ableton Live on stage with your band uh, or by by yourself as a solo artist, live looping artist. Again, don't forget, I got some content coming for you guys. Then make sure to hit subscribe, enable the bell icon so you see exactly when I go live. It's a free way to say thanks. It's a free way to make sure you get content you enjoy and like. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.